What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Doki Doki Drawing, and today's episode is Style Man A. And if you're wondering what that is, it's the show where we have a look at popular anime and manga styles, and we try to learn as much as we can from them by trying to mimic those styles and seeing if there's anything in there that we can learn and assimilate into our own personal styles. And the style that I'm going to be looking at today is, in fact, this area here. It's not a VR headset. We're going to be looking at the eyes of one of the main characters in My Dress Up Darling. Don't want to give too many spoilers away, but obviously it's a show about cosplay. And there's one character who does all of the designing of the costumes and the other character who does most of the wearing of the costumes and doing the cosplay itself. But one thing I noticed in particular when watching this show was the absolute incredible detail and attention given to the eyes of this character. Now to start things off, let's actually get a base sketch for a head so that we can figure out where to, to put the eyes of this character. Just lower the opacity on this layer so we can draw over the top of it. And now let's see if we can have an attempt at Marin's eyes. You may have seen in lots of other anime, they'll, well, you know, the nose is down here and the eye itself will extend all the way down like this much to fill out this whole this whole area. But Marin's eyes are significantly smaller than that. So even though the nose is down here, I would say like the eyes are half the size, you know, half of the way down towards where the nose sits. You've got the eyelash coming down quite low, all the way up to the top of the eye, and then coming back down before it gets down to the end and swooping out really beautifully. It's interesting because in the show, I think the story goes that she doesn't do her cosplay makeup by herself, but she does seem to have really nice day-to-day -day makeup, so it's kind of inconsistent. So down on the inner corner, up here for the top, and then kind of evening out as it swoops out with a nice wing towards the outer edge of the eye. A couple folds in here for the eyelash, the double eyelid fold over the top, Remember, she's a super fashionable girl. And then to top off the rest of this eyelash, she's actually got some really nicely done, I guess, you what do you call this, M mascara? Flicking out of her eyelashes, but only on the outer edge. There's not so much mascara applied to the inner edge. May have been a little bit too aggressive with the spikes. Now coming down to the bottom edge of the eye, in fact, you generally see in a lot of scenes that instead of having one long line here at the base of the eye, you do find that it's often split into two parts. There is the main line, which is the base of the eye, and then there is a second line leading to the outer, what do you call this, the outer edge of the eye. And sometimes they're connected, sometimes they're not connected, but they're often, you, f you feel like they're in two separate parts. And then on the outer edge, of the base part of this eye. You see a little more mascara again. Not quite as violently spiky as the mascara applied on the top eyelid. Just nicely applying some mascara here. This is a fun eye to draw, for sure. Now, if this were colored in, you'd also see the whites of the eyes. I'll just do that in red so you can vaguely see that the skin color ends around here and the whites of the eyes are actually filled in like so. So the next thing we're going to add to this eye is the iris itself, somewhere here in the middle. And I've never drawn this before, still this is completely a learning experience for me to just understand more about this character. But one thing that I have noticed about her iris in particular is that it is mostly, mostly a perfect circle. And now for the fun part, we actually get to draw the colorful part of the eye. So I'm going to add the base color as a separate layer. Is it kind of this color? A little bit more purpley. Ooh, this pink color we've got here, this is pretty much the color that we want. If you're completely new to drawing and you're wondering how I'm getting the color to go perfectly inside these black lines, it's because it's on a separate layer. You can see that you can move this color layer above the line art, but as long as it's below the line art, then the line art will show up on top so you don't have to be super careful. Now that I've got the base color in there, I'm going to go and add the darker color for the iris, which is immediately surrounding the pupil. So I'm gonna, again, put that on a separate layer. I'm gonna choose a different color. I'm just going to fill this in here in the middle. Perhaps the edge on this is a little bit rough. Could probably afford to have a slightly 
less well-defined edge, and I might change that in my settings here. So going over here to hardness, let's see if I drop this down to two. Technically that's about 30%. Yeah, this is a much softer, softer look. The pupil itself, which I'm gonna draw on top of this, this has got quite a hard defined edge. I'm just going to draw a little circle right here in the middle. Next thing I want to do is go back to this layer. I'm gonna use the same color. If you're new to coloring, you might not be aware of this, but you don't, again, have to color perfectly on the lines because obviously if you just draw like this, then it's gonna be super messy and the lines will, you'll, you'll get the line that you want, which is this outer edge of color, but then it's all spilling out the outside of the eye. So if I move this layer down below to the base color, and then I click this button here that says, clip to layer below, then no matter where I draw, you will only see lines appear where there is color applied, you know, areas that are not transparent, like, you know, the colored layer right below it. And open this brush a little bit wider, and then we're just going to add this color to the edge. Now the thing is, it's actually got a harder edge, so I'm gonna go back to the setting over here. I'm gonna change this back to, what is this, 95% hardness we're going to color this in around the edge of the eye. Whoa, huge, that's way too big. To be honest, I think this might be a little bit too hard. Let's try three out of five, which is apparently 60%. And now before we start adding highlights, I want to add the shadow for this eye. Go to a layer here at the top of this stack. This shadow will only cover the iris and the whites of the eye. What I want is for this shadow to darken the areas below it. So something like the multiply blend mode. I mean, this isn't perfect, but this is close enough. And I'll make a new layer on top where I'm going to add some dark shading over here. The character in the anime, she gets so excited about her favorite anime and manga characters and video game characters that she wants to cosplay and every time she gets an idea or someone promises her that something cool is about to happen her eyes literally light up before adding the main highlights i'm going to add the sort of sub highlights at the base of the eye for example if i draw a white sort of sub sub highlight or re reflected light here at the base of the eye what we can do is we can muck about with these different blend modes. Soft light. Soft light seems to work. Actually, you know what? I think that's <laughs> that's done it perfectly. It does quite a good job of lightening the shade of the pinks below it without turning them just to a solid white. And on top of this, we're gonna add some solid reflected lights that are not using this filter. The light violet color. I feel like more often than not, you see two of these and they are to the sides of the reflected light. Sometimes it's a little bit closer. One last thing I want to add to this eye is the solid white highlight. And sometimes you see them like a big one here to the side and a smaller one over here. And then sometimes you have them reversed because you know she's looking in a different direction or the light is coming from a different direction. It's so got a large one here on the side there, and a smaller one over here. Glow dodge. Ooh, glow dodge has a really nice look to it. You can see the edges become a, a sort of harsher pink. I do feel like there is a little bit of a glow, but maybe not quite as harsh as what you see here. So what I'll do is I'll soften it by adding, you know, glow dodge like this. But what I'm going to do is add on top of that just some standard white with really soft lighting. So just use hard light maybe? Here we go. We can just soften, soften the effect. And there you have it. I am quite happy with the way that this eye looks, but it is, you know, the original lines, I did them in pencil. I think it would be better if I went over them with the G pen. What I really want to do is make this a little bit closer to the shape of Marin's eyes because they actually go up closer in the, on the inner corner of the eye. And then they kind of droop out a little bit more on the outside. And now let's get the G pen out for the final layer. Let's move this over to the side to adjust for the changes I made earlier. I think I need to edit this line a bit more. 
All right, and that is pretty much complete. I think looking at it from a slightly zoomed out view now, I feel like I could have afforded to have these areas actually even larger. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a brush and we're just going to go a little bit more wild. All right, yeah, I think that's a little bit closer to the, the correct effect. And to be quite honest, I feel like there's quite a lot more that can be done here. One minor little thing that I might also add on top of this is little dotted lines for the iris. Even if you don't go for the super crazy highlighted look, that you get with Marin's eyes. I think this is a small little detail that you can add to your own characters, which really adds that slight element of realism without going into, you know, a realistic facial shape. But I think there's even more that can be done. For example, other versions with twice as many highlights and even more effects. But personally, I'm quite satisfied with this first attempt. I think things I might take away from this and add to my own characters specifically are things like these dotted lines here for the iris, the soft light. I used the soft light mode on the blend modes to add this reflected highlight here at the base. Judicious use of big highlights and blurring out like one of the edges. Maybe the splitting up of the bottom eyelid into two different eyelashes, a base eyelash here on the left and you know, another one kind of forming, filling out the rest of the shape here on the right. Not forgetting to add mascara, you know, eyelashes to the base and to the top. This is only one pose for the character, but obviously when you've got her at different angles and with different expressions and in different situations, there is so much expression to be seen in this particular character's face in the anime. So I highly recommend that you go and check it out. It's been a fun show. I only really wanted to watch one episode, so I got an idea of what the eyes looks like, but you know, the more that I watched, I ended up just watching the, the whole series and I, I really enjoyed it. So anyway, let us know if there was anything in there in particular that you really enjoyed that you would like to see more of. And for future episodes of Style Man A, be sure to let us know in the comments what other characters you'd like to see, other styles, maybe you'd like to see shapes of the ears or different styles of the way that people draw hair. Maybe you'd like to see a focus on mouth shapes or nose shapes. Let us know in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's all for today and we'll see you in the next Doki Doki Drawing video.